Despite the fact that the ancient Chinese were among the first to employ flamethrowers in a military role over a thousand years ago, by the time of the Second Sino-Japanese War, they were no longer being used by Chinese forces. Being a very specialized and complex weapon, it would have been quite difficult to train soldiers to both operate and maintain them. Fuel for the flamethrowers would have been extremely scarce and expensive for the Chinese as well, and the fact that the Chinese were for the most part fighting a defensive battle against the Japanese further limited their potential usefulness. As a result, flamethrowers wouldn't appear in the Chinese army until very late in the war. Towards the final years of World War II, the situation in China was changing. Aided by other allied countries, the Chinese were now on the offensive in many areas, and with large amounts of foreign weapons and equipment arriving in the country, the Chinese forces were provided with the opportunity to use more specialized weapons in their war against Japan. This video will examine the most common flamethrower used by the Chinese forces during the Second Sino-Japanese War, the US M1A1 flamethrower. Unlike many of the other nations that participated in World War I, the US military never adopted their own flamethrower during the conflict. This was partly due to the fact that they joined the war quite late, but they also recognized many of its shortcomings, including its limited range and how vulnerable their operators were to enemy fire. In fact, many considered their performance during the First World War to be a complete failure. As a result, the flamethrower was essentially overlooked during the interwar period, and relatively little research or development occurred in this area. However, after seeing how they were employed by various nations during the numerous conflicts and battles of the late 1930s, American perception of this weapon started to shift. In August of 1940, the Chemical Warfare Service began development of a portable flamethrower, eventually resulting in the first experimental model, known as the E-1 flamethrower. A number of flaws were noted with the E-1 and it was redesigned, resulting in the second experimental model, the E-1R1. In August of 1941, after making a few minor changes to the E-1R1, it was standardized as the M1 flamethrower. The weapon consisted of two parts, the gun unit, which the fuel was shot out of, as well as the fuel unit, or the tanks. The two fuel tanks held a total of 18 to 20 liters of fuel. About 10 to 20 percent of the tanks were left empty to allow for the entry of compressed air or nitrogen from a third, smaller, pressure cylinder, which is used to discharge the fuel. When full, the M1 flamethrower weighed around 30 kilograms and can maintain a steady stream of flames for up to 10 seconds. Originally, the M1 only used liquid fuel, severely limiting its effective range, which was only around 18 meters. In mid-1943, an improved version of the M1 flamethrower was introduced, the M1A1. The most noticeable difference was that the fuel tube on the M1A1 was straight, as opposed to the bent fuel tubes on the M1 flamethrowers. Some improvements were also made to the valves and connections, which allowed the M1A1 to use thickened fuel, increasing its effective range to around 45 meters. Since it used the same fuel unit as the M1 flamethrower, the fuel capacity and the duration of fire remained unchanged, holding 18 to 20 liters of fuel and being capable of sustained fire for around 10 seconds. However, soldiers were advised to fire in short bursts of 2 to 3 seconds each, as pressure drops were known to occur when firing the M1A1 in long bursts, decreasing its effective range. Its weight remained relatively the same as well, around 14.5 kilograms when empty, or around 30 kilograms with the tanks filled. Although it would start to be replaced by the M2 flamethrower later on in the war, the M1A1 still saw extensive use with US forces from the battlefields of Europe to the Pacific. This would also be the type that was supplied to the Chinese army during the Second World War. In April of 1944, the US agreed to provide the Chinese unit stationed in Yunnan, also known as Y-Force, with 120 of the M1A1 flamethrowers. It's possible that additional numbers were allocated later on, as by May of 1945, records show that a total of 332 flamethrowers were available to Chinese units. Although the exact distribution of these flamethrowers is slightly unclear, they were provided to some of the specialized units, such as the engineer battalions. There seems to have been plans to provide one flamethrower to each infantry company as well. However, this was likely not accomplished due to the limited numbers of M1A1s available to Y-Force. Chinese troops stationed in India, known as X-Force, also received a number of these flamethrowers, with some sources suggesting that as many as 85 were provided to each of the infantry divisions there. However, like with Y-Force, the exact numbers and distributions of the flamethrowers and X-Force is unclear as well. As they were specialized weapons, their distribution likely varied slightly between units, and to a certain degree, may have been up to the discretion of the unit commanders. 
Chinese troops were trained in the use of the M1A1 by American advisors. In addition to learning how to operate the flamethrowers, the men were also taught tactics that had proven useful in other theaters. Period footage often shows Chinese troops using these tactics during combat, working as a team with a few men using small arms and grenades to cover the vulnerable flamethrower operator as he moves closer to his target. The Chinese units of X-Force would receive their flamethrowers with relatively little problems due to the fact that they were stationed in India. Supplies provided by the U.S. to China were first shipped to ports in India and could be distributed to Chinese troops stationed there with relative ease. The situation with Y-Force was quite different, however, due to the fact that they were located within China. After the fall of Burma to the Japanese and prior to the opening of the Lido Road, all supplies and equipment had to be brought into the country by air from India, and with priority being given to other types of equipment and weapons, shipments of flamethrowers to the units of Y-Force proved to be quite slow. However, a number of them managed to arrive in time to participate in the Salween Offensive, which began in May of 1944. Looking to retake parts of Yunnan that had been lost to the Japanese, the Chinese units of Y-Force pushed southwest across the Salween River, in coordination with X-Force, who were attacking eastwards through northern Burma. The linking up of these two forces would mean that a new overland supply route from India to China could be opened, speeding up the delivery of war aid to China. During the Salween Offensive, the Chinese used the M1A1 flamethrowers, along with other specialized weapons like the boys' anti-tank rifles, as well as bazookas, against fortified Japanese positions in areas like Tengchong and Songshan. X-Force would also make use of their flamethrowers during the battles to retake northern Burma. Despite appearing extremely late in the war and in small numbers, the M1A1 flamethrowers, when present, proved to be quite useful against entrenched Japanese defenders. Furthermore, the use of flamethrowers represented another step in the modernization of the Chinese military, where instead of attacking enemy positions with only rifles, grenades, and machine guns, Chinese troops are now able to incorporate specialized weapons, such as these, in their assaults.